All right, future CFA pros, today we're diving deep into the world of bond pricing and yield calculations. This is the stuff that makes the bond market tick. You see, bonds might seem boring compared to the fast-paced world of stocks, but understanding them is crucial for anyone aiming to master the financial markets. Think of bonds as the sturdy, reliable sidekicks of your investment portfolio. They might not always steal the show, but they're essential for stability. So let's roll up our sleeves and break this down piece by piece. First things first, bond pricing. It all boils down to one thing, the time value of money. What does that mean? Simply put, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Why? Because you can invest that dollar and earn interest. This concept is at the heart of how we price bonds using discounted cash flow DCF analysis. When you buy a bond, you're buying a series of future cash flows, the periodic coupon payments and the principal repayment at the end. To figure out how much these future cash flows are worth today, we use the market discount rate, a fancy way of saying the required yield. This discount rate reflects the risk of the investment. The higher the risk, the higher the discount rate, and the lower the bond price. To price a bond, we sum up the present value, PV, of all future cash flows. Here's the formula you need to remember. Think about a Bright Wheels automotive bond. If it's paying a 4% coupon while the market discount rate is 2%, everyone wants a piece of that action. It's a premium bond. But if the market's demanding a 6% return, suddenly that 4% coupon isn't so hot anymore and the bond trades at a discount. It's all about supply and demand, folks. If a bond's coupon rate is higher than the market discount rate, it's priced at a premium. If it's lower, it's priced at a discount. It's like Goldilocks. Everything needs to be just right. Now, let's talk about yield to maturity, YTM. YTM is like the IRR, internal rate of return of a bond. It's what you'd earn if you held the bond until maturity and reinvested all the coupon payments at that same yield. YTM is the discount rate that makes the present value of all future cash flows from the bond coupons and principal repayment equal to the bond's current market price. It's the ultimate measure of a bond's return because it accounts for everything, the bond's price, its coupon payments, and the time value of money. Conditions for achieving YTM. The bond is held until maturity. The issuer makes all full coupon and principal payments as scheduled. The investor reinvests all coupon payments at the same YTM rate. Say you bought a 10-year corporate bond for $950 below par with a 5% coupon rate while the current market YTM is 6%. If you hold it to maturity, your YTM will reflect the gains from buying it at a discount plus the reinvested coupons. Sweet deal, right? When we talk about bond pricing between coupon payments, things get a bit more interesting. Bonds trade with accrued interest, which is the interest that has built up since the last coupon payment. So we get two prices, flat price or clean price. This is the quoted price without accrued interest. It's the clean price bond dealers like to quote. Accrued interest is the interest that has accumulated since the last coupon payment. If you buy a bond mid period, you owe the seller this interest because they held the bond for part of the coupon period, but won't get the next payment. You will. Full price or dirty price. 
this is the total price you actually pay, which includes the flat price plus accrued interest. It's what you pay on the settlement date, the day the transaction is completed. Let's say a bond pays interest semi-annually on May 15th and November 10th. If you buy it on June 25th using the actual over actual day count convention, the accrued interest is calculated for the 41 days since May 15th. The accrued interest formula looks like this. Let's walk through how to calculate accrued interest in this example. Imagine a bond that pays interest semi-annually with payment dates on May 15th and November 10th. If you purchase this bond on June 25th, you'll need to calculate the interest that has accrued since the last payment on May 15th, which is 41 days. Using the actual over actual day count convention, the formula for accrued interest is straightforward. Accrued interest equals 41 divided by 179 multiplied by 4%. Since the coupon payments are semi-annually, we will also divide it by 2. This gives us 0.4581% per 100 of par value. Now, let's chat about the inverse relationship between bond prices and yields. When yields go up, prices go down, and when yields go down, prices go up. Imagine it like a seesaw. One side goes up, the other side goes down. This relationship is crucial for bond investors who need to understand how interest rate changes affect their portfolio. Now let's talk about coupon effect. Bonds with lower coupons are more sensitive to changes in interest rates because a larger portion of their cash flow comes at maturity. That's why zero coupon bonds, which pay all their interest at the end, are the most sensitive to rate changes. Maturity effect. Um, longer term bonds are also more sensitive to rate changes than shorter term bonds. Why? Because the longer you have to wait for your money, the more those interest rate changes will affect the bond's present value. If you hold a 30 year zero coupon bond and rates rise by 1%, your bond's price will drop a lot more than if you held a five year bond. It's all about duration and the time value of money, folks. Okay, now on to the constant yield price trajectory and convexity. Even if market yields remain constant, bond prices change over time. This is known as the constant yield price trajectory. Here's the kicker. If a bond is issued at a discount, its price will rise towards par as it approaches maturity. If it's issued at a premium, its price will fall towards par. It's like gravity, always pulling things back to equilibrium. Oh. The relationship between bond prices and yields isn't linear, it's convex. This means bond prices increase more for a decrease in yield than they decrease for an equivalent increase in yield. This is great for bond investors. When yields drop, your bond's price jumps up higher than it would fall if yields rose. Last but not least, let's talk about matrix pricing. What do you do when a bond isn't frequently traded and you need to estimate its price? You use matrix pricing, a method to estimate the price or yield by comparing it to similar bonds that are more actively traded. The matrix pricing process involves three key steps. First, identify comparable bonds that have similar characteristics, including credit quality, coupon rates, and maturities. Once you have identified these bonds, calculate the average yield for each maturity within the set of comparable bonds. Finally, use linear interpolation to estimate the yield for the desired maturity 
of the bond you're trying to price, allowing for a more precise determination of its value based on available data. This approach is particularly useful when direct pricing information is unavailable for the specific bond in question. Suppose a company is about to issue a new five-year bond but doesn't have an exact yield to reference. You could use matrix pricing to average the yields of three-year and seven-year government bonds, then interpolate to estimate the required yield spread for the new issue. It's like finding the middle ground when you don't have the exact number. And there you have it, folks. We've covered bond pricing, yield calculations, accrued interest, and matrix pricing, all the tools you need to become a master of the bond market. Remember, bonds may not have the same sizzle as stocks, but understanding them is crucial for any well-rounded investor. Keep practicing those calculations, dive into the real-world scenarios, and soon you'll be speaking the language of bonds like a pro. Until next time, keep studying hard and stay sharp.